Hello, I'm Anthony C. Williams, pastor of the Our Fathers Church, located at 473 East Lakedon Avenue in the great city of Muskegon in the state of Michigan. We'd like to thank you for joining us on our telecast today, and we pray that the message will be a blessing to you. Uh, the message is entitled, Exposing the Devil for Defeat. It's an exciting message and I hope you enjoy it. So come on, get your paper, get your Bible, get your pen or your pencil, and come on and let's go into the Word. Amen. The Gospel according to St. Luke, chapter 4, verse number 1. Amen. And listen what the Word of the Lord says. It says, And Jesus, being full of the Holy Ghost, returned from Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness, being 40 days tempted of the devil. And in those days he did eat nothing. And when they were ended, he afterwards hungered. And the devil said unto him, If thou be the Son of God, command this stone that it be made bread. And Jesus answered him, saying, It is written that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. And the devil taketh Jesus up into a high mountain and showeth unto him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. And the devil said unto Jesus, All this power will I give thee, and the glory of them, for that it is delivered unto me, and to whosoever I will, I give it. If thou therefore will worship me, all shall be thine. And Jesus answered and said unto the devil, Get thee behind me, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shall thy serve. And the devil brought Jesus to Jerusalem and set him on the pinnacle of the temple and said unto him, If thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down from hence. For it is written, he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee. And in their hands they shall bear thee up, lest at any time thou dash thy foot against a stone. And Jesus answering said unto the devil, It is said, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. And when the devil had ended all his temptations, he departed from him for a season. And Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit into Galilee. And there went out a fame of him throughout all the regions round about. And he taught in their synagogues, being glorified of all. Uh, you may be seated in the presence of the Lord. I want to open uh, a new series up today. And the series is going to be entitled, Exposing the Devil for Defeat. Exposing the Devil for Defeat. And the first installment coming out of that series is going to be the power of the Holy Ghost, exposing the devil for a defeat. Uh, that was, I guess, about a week or so. Uh, a friend of mine called from uh, Georgia. He was a student at one of the classes I was teaching out there, uh, or must have been some... 15 odd years ago and he called me he had seen us on Facebook he had saw the church on Facebook and he called in reference to see if I was the same Anthony Williams that was teaching out in Georgia and talking to some of the members here uh, he left his number and I called him back and the first thing he said he says pastor he says when I saw you he said, the first thing I thought about is that message you preached at Pleasant Hill uh, so many odd years ago. And I said, well, Doc, I said, well, what was it? Because I didn't preach so many messages since then. I couldn't even think of what he was talking about. He said, you preached a message that was, that was entitled uh, Exposing the Devil for Defeat. 
And he went on to tell me about that message. And, and as I prayed on that message, uh, the Lord began to bring it back to me because he says, at this time now, we need to expose the devil because of what he's doing to our families and what he's doing to our children and how he's running rampant in our neighborhoods. And he began, the Lord began to regurgitate that message back to me uh, because I couldn't even remember uh, the text and the verses that I had used to preach that message. Uh, but in my prayer time, the Lord began to bring that message back to me. And he said that it would be a paramount message for those that who would receive it and learn uh, some of the wiles and the tricks of the devil. And the first place he took me was to 1 John uh, chapter number 2, little John in the back, chapter number 2, verse number 16. And it says, for all that is in the world is the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, and the pride of life. And that this is not of the Father, but it is of the world. And then it began to come back to me uh, as the Lord was revealing that all the devil has is three tricks. He's got the lust of the flesh, he's got the lust of the eye, and he's got the pride of life. And it's the same thing that he's been doing to mankind from the very beginning of time. And he took me back to Genesis in the garden of Genesis in the third chapter where it talks about that the serpent was more subtle, uh, more cunning, uh, more slick, more divisive uh, than any other beast of the field and how he came to the woman Eve and began to ask her, uh, yea, has God said uh, that thou shalt not eat of every tree of the garden? And Eve went on to explain to the serpent that no, God says that we could eat of every tree of the garden, but that tree that's in the midst of the garden, he said, don't eat it and don't touch it lest ye die. And Satan, and that's the first time in scripture uh, that the devil comes directly against God's word. He says, uh, God said that will not happen that's what he told the woman you shall not surely die uh, but God knows that the day that you eat of that fruit that your eyes should be open and you should become like God's knowing good and evil and when it got down to the sixth verse it says and when the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was pleasant to the eyes and a tree to be desired to make one wise. It said that she took of the fruit thereof and did eat and gave also unto her husband with her. And he did eat and we know that all mankind fell and sin entered the world. But what that text reveals to us is the three tricks that Satan has been using ever since the garden uh, with Adam and Eve. It's the same three that he used on Adam and Eve. It's the same three that he tried to use on Jesus here in the wilderness. And it's the same three that he uses on us today. And, and, and John says that it's three things. It's the lust of the flesh. It's the lust of the eye. And it's the pride of life. And, and so little John tells us if we can get a grip on our flesh, if we can get singleness of I, and if we could humble ourselves before the mighty hand of the Lord, then the enemy has no tools to manipulate us and have power over us. Uh, all of the sins of the world come from those three things, lust of the flesh, lust of the eye, and the pride of life. When you look down in Genesis, if you want to follow me closely, you can look down in Genesis, and I'll show you exactly where he used those three things at. Uh, Genesis chapter 3, verse 6, it says, And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, lust of the flesh, and that it was pleasant 
to the eyes, lust of the eyes, and a tree to be desired to make one wise, the pride of life. Said she took of the fruit thereof and did eat and gave also with her husband with her. And now this is not part of my preaching premise, but I want to put this in too for those of you who are married and your husbands are the spiritual head of your household. It says that the husband was standing right there while the serpent was was talking to his wife and and I want to advise the husbands this ain't what I come to preach on but I just want to put that in there while I'm there I want to advise the husbands to always be the covering over your family always be the one to speak up for what's wrong and what needs to be right uh, because according to the Bible the husband was standing right there Adam, who had dominion over everything, and he never checked the serpent. Uh, he was standing right there when the serpent was talking, when he should have took charge of the serpent. The Lord had gave him dominion over everything, over everything that creepeth and crawleth on the earth. He had dominion. Had Adam simply rebuked the serpent, he could have protected his wife. But instead of Adam protecting his wife like Jesus did, Adam died with his wife by being disobedient. And, and I want you to see here uh, that this serpent that the devil was using to tempt Eve only had three weapons to work with. Now see that blessed me. That blessed me to only find out that the devil can use only three things against me. And that blessed me to find out that he only has three weapons he can use against me. Look at it closely. He takes those three weapons and he uses them. And a lot of times he don't use them in their single form. Uh, he Sometimes he puts two of them together. Uh, I want you to examine this text here in Genesis chapter 3 verse number six have you got your Bibles there look at what it says it says and when the woman saw that the tree was good for food and see he put something before her to see but the real objective was to get the lust of the flesh he was after the body but he got the body through what she saw and when she saw that the tree she took it was good for food so and, and so he uses what she saw to infect a different part of the body oh you got to get this because a lot of times the devil will distract you in one area while he's really trying to attack another area uh, once he got her sight and then he could really attack what he was after, which was lust of the flesh. It says, when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, which is the lust of the flesh, and that, look, it was pleasant to the eyes. That's the lust of the eye. He said, a tree to be desired to make one wise is the pride of life. Now, now I want to deal with this desire a little bit before I go on because the desire is not bad. Mm. Because the Lord put the desire in us, the desire to do better, uh, the desire to have a good job, the desire to live in a good way, the desire for your kids to grow up healthy, wealthy, and wise, the desire to see your marriage flourish, a desire to be able to live comfortly. God put the desires in us, and the desires is not bad, but it's when the desire begins to drive you beyond or outside the borders of what God has prescribed. And what I mean by that, it's okay to have the desire but what will you do to get it mm. in the world today the desire and the lust and the pride of life is so rampant today that they could desire it so much that they'll kill for it mm. 
they'll steal for it. They'll fight for it because the desire has gone into overdrive. It's running rampant. And so we see that the devil here, he uses those same three tricks. And because it was successful in the garden, then there was no reason for him to change. So because he was able to use the lust of the flesh, what your flesh desires and what makes your flesh feel good uh, because he was able to use the lust of the eye, the things that catches your attention, the things that attracts your eyesight. Have you ever noticed that when you're driving a car, the way that you look that car tends to go, if you turn your head to look on the side, that that car tends to go that way? Well, that's how it is with the lust of the eyes. The devil uses things that are appealing to the eyes because once he captures your attention, then he can begin to work his other tricks on you. So he figures since it worked on Adam and Eve, who was the first right change. So when he gets to Jesus here in our text, he tries the same Three tricks on Jesus, lust of the flesh, lust of the eye, and the pride of life. But only here Jesus tells us how to defeat the devil, where Adam could not expose him and give us a remedy to how to defeat the devil. Jesus comes right behind Adam and his wife, falling and begin to show us how to expose the devil and not only expose him but to defeat him and so when we get back over to our text Luke chapter number four the first weapon that Jesus says that we should have is we have to be full somebody with me of the Holy Ghost it says Jesus being full of the Holy Ghost returned from Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. It always puzzled me, why was Jesus led by the Spirit in the wilderness? And see, and I want you to understand this as Christians. I want you to understand this as Holy Ghost feel baptized believers that you don't go to the top like that. There are some things that you've got to defeat out of your life before God can bless you with what he has for you. God is not going to bless you with it so the devil can trick you out of it. And so the Bible says Jesus was full of the Holy Ghost and the first place the Spirit led him was in the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. Uh, because how can you go into a strong man's house and wreck his house and unless first you bind that strong man. You see, that's very insight, and that's why I'm going to make it a series because I'm not going to be able to cover it all, but see... Uh, Jesus knew for him to function and do what God needed him to do in the world, the first thing I got to do is take care of this devil. The first thing I got to do is put this devil under my feet. If my family is going to flourish, if my finances are going to flourish, if my children are going to be able to grow up healthy, wealthy, and wise, the first thing I got to do is get a grip and put this devil under my feet. It said that he was full of the Holy Ghost, but the Spirit didn't lead him to a great big old church. The Spirit didn't lead him to a great big old house. The Spirit led him to the wilderness, a dry place, a desert place where he fasted for 40 days and 40 nights. And the first thing he did was he brought his body under submission because one of the attacks of the enemy is the lust of the flesh. It's the stuff that makes your body feel good that can destroy you. It's the stuff that draws you and make you feel good in your body. And that's where your addictions come from. And that's where your alcohol abuse come from. That's where sex anonymous comes from. Because all of this stuff feels good to your body. Your flesh craves it and it wants it. And the first thing Jesus did was brought his flesh 
under subjection. It's right there in your Bible. It says, and Jesus being full of the Holy Ghost returned from Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness, being 40 days tempted of the devil, and in those days he did eat nothing. And when they were ended, he afterwards was hungry. And the devil said unto Jesus, if thou be the son of God, command this stone that it be made bread. See, the devil lurks and he looks around to when he thinks you're at your weakest point. And when he thinks you're at your weakest point, that's when he attacks. But see, Jesus tricked him. My flesh might be weak, but my spirit was strong. And what the devil actually ran into was a buzzsaw because his flesh he had brought under control and every time you crucify your flesh and every time you bring your flesh under subjection your spirit rises I may be a little weak in my flesh but my spirit is still strong huh? I may not be able to get around like I used to but my prayer life is still strong huh? I may not have the mobility that I used to have huh? but I'm still consecrated I'm still reading my word I'm still praising the Lord I might not be able to do all I used to do physically but spiritually I'm stronger than ever say why Jesus was fasting and crucifying his flesh he was increasing his spirit because that's what it's going to take to uh, maintain the attacks of the devil. It takes the spirit that's in a man to grab his flesh and pull it under control so it's not outdoing any and everything. Touch your neighbor and say, you need the Holy Ghost. You need to be full of the Holy Ghost. I want you to get that word. He was full of the Holy Ghost, which means he didn't have no room for nothing else. When you full of the Holy Ghost, you don't have room for doubt. You don't have room for confusion. You don't have room for misunderstanding because when I'm full of the Holy Ghost, nothing else can get in. Temptation can't get in when I'm full of the Holy Ghost. Disobedience can't get in when I'm full of the Holy Ghost. When I'm full of the Holy Ghost, nothing can get in but God says he was full of the Holy Ghost and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. And he fasted 40 days, and that devil was there looking. And after 40 days, he thought that the Lord Jesus was weak because the devil always deal with what's happening on the outside. But you win from within. I don't go by what's happening outside. I go by the power that's living on the inside of me because the Lord tells me that greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. So I don't go by what I see. I don't go by what's happening around around me. I'm not dictated by my situation. I'm dictated by my God and my spirit, which means I can be in a hellish situation and something on the inside of me is study telling me to press forward just a little while longer. Uh, they could be lying and talking about me. They could be hating on me and backbiting me, but the spirit that's in me tells me to press on uh, just a little while longer uh, because greater is he that's in me uh, than he that's in the world. I want you to get that because you might not understand. That means sickness has to obey. That means poverty has to obey. That means confusion and doubt. It has to obey because greater is he that's in me than he that is in the world. And anything in the world that's coming against you has to bow to the name of Jesus. Help me Holy Ghost. I'm going to try to get through this, y'all. But I know right now that the Spirit of God is in this place because you need to know what the enemy has been doing to your family. You need to know how the enemy has been destroying marriages. You need to know how the enemy has been destroying our children. How the devil is bringing confusion.
confusion. Uh, mama and daddy can't get along. Father and son can't get along. Mother and daughter can't get along. Sister and brother can't get along. You need to expose that devil. And when you expose him, put your feet on his neck. Say the devil looked at Jesus after fasting 40 days. He knew Jesus was hungry. Look how the devil tailors his temptation. He tailor makes his temptation to fit your situation. See, he didn't come say, thirsty drank you some water because he knew he was hungry see he didn't come offering him material things because he knew he was hungry the first thing he offered him was the thing that it took to meet his hunger and his need see the devil knew he was hungry so he offered bread and can I tell you something every piece of bread that is offered to you ain't good bread maybe I better put it in a terminology that you might understand all money ain't good money. When you got to do things against your character and against your nature and against your behavior to have it, it ain't worth having it. That's why you got to believe God. And if I was hungry, devil, I ain't going to let you know because you will use my weakness against me. Look at that low down devil. He knew Jesus was hungry and he offered him bread. Look what he say. He say, if thou be the son of God, turn these stones to bread. Look how he addressed him. If you be, if you saved, how come that's happening to you? If you faithful, why, why are you going through that? If you a tither, how come you don't have this? He say, if you be the son of God, turn these stones into bread. He knew he was the son of God because in the count of Matthew, they got the baptizing of Jesus right before Matthew chapter 4. At the end of Matthew chapter 3, it talks about Jesus being led to John to be baptized to him and say that when Jesus was baptized, he came straightway up out of the water, the spirit descended like a dove, and the heavens opened up. And a voice from heaven said, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. Satan heard it. He was up there in the mountains. He heard it. He heard it when the heavens opened up. He heard it when the Lord said he was going to bless you. He heard it when the Lord said he was going to bring your kids out. He heard it when the Lord said he was going to give you a job. And he comes with doubt. He comes to make you doubt. Touch your name and say, you got to know who you are. You got to know who you are in Christ. You can't walk this walk and be doubting and wondering if the Lord has me. There's no doubt in my mind. I know he has me. I don't have to wonder. He said he'll never leave me. He said he would never forsake me. He said he would always be with me. I don't have to doubt about the Lord and no devil in hell can make me wonder if God has my back or not. I I know he's got my back. I know he's keeping me. I know he's watching over me.